Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life UK, where great barbecue doesn't have to cost a fortune. Today we are cooking steak and I am going to turn this into this. So yes, today we are cooking steak again. So I've got a nice thick uh, ribeye steak that I've picked up from the butchers at Morrison's. So it's probably just under an inch thick and it cost me just over nine pounds. Um, I haven't got the exact weight because I threw the packaging away before I checked it, but about an inch thick is what we're talking about. So I'm going to be cooking this today on the Weber kettle. So the cooking method that I'm using will work exactly the same on the Audi Camaro. Um, but I've decided to use the Weber kettle today just because I want to show how great and all round um, that barbecue is. I don't cook on it enough on the channel really. So that's where it's going to be going today. So as I say, this steak's about an inch thick. So instead of buying two skinnier steaks to feed two people, the plan is with this, you buy one thicker steak and then you can cut that in half and split that between the two of you. And you're going to get a better cooked steak by cooking a thicker one and having the same amount to eat each than you are buying two thin ones. And my reason for cooking it on the Weber kettle, um, the way that we're going to be cooking it, is because a lot of people have been saying about, oh, all you do is cook dirty steaks. And I do like a dirty steak. I've cooked dirty steaks a few times on the channel whether that be a reverse sear dirty steak or whether that just be dirty steaks in general so i want to show you a completely new um well not new because you may have seen it before but a new way to the channel um of cooking this steak so before we can cook it we need to get it prepared so i've got some henderson's strong and northern sauce so this was sent over by a viewer called john um, he left a comment on one of the videos saying about how he doesn't use Worcester sauce. He uses this because he's from up north. And I said never had it before. And he was nice enough to send it over to the channel, which was really nice. So my first thoughts are it's quite like Worcester sauce, but it smells a little bit sweeter. Almost a little bit picklish, I suppose is my best way to put it, compared to um, what normal Worcester sauce would be. So... We're going to get that all over the steak, both sides and on the edges. And then we're just going on with some salt on both sides. And we're going to put it away for about an hour in the fridge. And that salt is just going to start to bring the moisture out of the outside. Give us a nice seasoning on that steak. And that is all we want to season it with to begin with. So as I say, get that in the fridge for about an hour. And it will just dry it out, getting any of the... Um, moisture from the supermarket is going to evaporate out of it. The moisture out of the a binder is going to come out of it as well. And the salt's going to flavour it well. So while we've got that in the fridge, we need to get our um, weather lit. So I killed my chimney starter this week. The bottom fell out of it and I've not got around to ordering a new one yet. But I want to show you another way that you can light your charcoal in the weather kettle with, if you don't have a chimney starter or your chimney starter has just died like mine. So we start off with an empty charcoal basket and a full charcoal basket. So into the empty charcoal baskets, we put a couple of uh, woodies. We're gonna get them lit, and then you invert the other, the charcoal basket full of charcoal over the top of it so that the long edge is on the curved edge of the bottom one, and that keeps it nice and stable. You get a nice air gap in between so that the Woodies can get a decent burn, and then the charcoal on top lights. You might want to move it down so that you can get the ends. That's what I did. I moved it up a little bit, moved it down a little bit, so that we got a nice even burn across the bottom of that charcoal. And then, as you know, heat rises, so that is going to rise up through the charcoal basket, and you end up with a lot of nice charcoal. If you need to use two baskets using this method, at the point that you've got your charcoal lit, take the top one off, Take some charcoal out with an old pair of tongs, split it across the two baskets and then fill it up with the rest of your um, unlit charcoal on the top. Leave the lid open for a little while for it to take and that's how you're going to get both baskets lit. We only need one basket for this today because we're only cooking one steak. So once that's lit, I've got the basket in the middle of the grill and I've got my grill grate in place. I'm just using the standard with a master touch 
um, great put that in we're going to shut the lid vents fully open and we're just going to get that grill grate nice and hot before we can put our steak on so we've given it sort of 10 minutes to stabilize it's up to about 220 degrees c but it's a lot hotter directly over that charcoal which is how we're going to be cooking this steak so the way that we're going to be cooking this steak today is we're going to be putting it onto the charcoal we're going to leave it a minute to begin with and then we're going to flip and we're going to leave it a minute on that second side and then from then on we're going to keep flipping it every 30 to 40 seconds after you've done a couple of flips you want to go on with a baste so this can be made with whatever herbs and spices you like so i've used cattle dust from the rusty barbecue company which is basically spg on steroids it's got lots of other herbs in there it's got some coffee in there and it works incredibly well with all things bovine so i've got a teaspoon of that into a little dish and i'm going on with a nice glug of olive oil you just want to give that a stir so that you've got it all incorporated and this is going to be our base to go on the steak once it's sort of halfway cooked so now that we've got that made we're going to get our steak on so as i say a minute on that first side and then we'll flip we've got a nice bit of color on there some grill lines flip onto that second side and a minute on that side now we're going to flip every 30 to 40 seconds so i've not filmed the whole cooking thing so we're just going to keep flipping it, keep probing it. So every time you flip it, get a probe in there to check what temperature it is. Once it hits about 30 degrees C, this is when you want to go on with your baste. So just get a brush, dip it in your herby oil mixture and brush that over. After that 30 to 40 seconds, flip it over so that's on the bottom and brush the top side again. And then keep doing it. Check the temperature and then flip, baste, check the temperature, flip, baste, check the temperature. You want to be pulling your steak off if you want a medium rare you want to be pulling it off about 52 is where I normally go for. So I'm um, flipping and basting, flipping and basting, going, check it, and I've hit 54 in a thin part, 55, uh, sorry, 55 in a thin part, 54 in a thicker part. So I want to get it straight off and let it rest. So we take it off, get it onto a board and this is where it needs to sit and rest let the juices redistribute if you want to top it up with a bit more rub you can so i've just gone on again with that uh, cattle dust from the rusty barbecue company give that a nice shake there is a link to the website in the um, description below and a discount code for 10 percent off of their website while we're talking about things like that please do subscribe to the channel like the video and leave me a comment even if it's just a feedback comment, if you don't like what I'm doing, let me know. Be nice about it, but let me know. I'll try and justify what I'm doing, or if I agree that I've done something wrong, I will make sure that I put it right in my next video. But please do, leave me a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you really like what I'm doing. So we've let that steak rest for about five minutes, which is about, it probably took about six to seven minutes to cook itself. So we've let it rest, we've topped it up with that rub, and it's time to slice into it. The most important thing to do with a steak is to let it rest. If you do not let it rest, all the juice is going to run out of it. You are going to end up with a dry steak, and you're going to end up with a tough steak. So always, please, let your steak rest for about the same time that you have let it cook for. So we're going to slice in across the grain. You can see the grain going across. Um, the meat and we want to go across that and that's going to give you a much tender bite than if you was to go with the grain so cut through the thickest part and as you can see we've got a nice uh, medium rare there the colour's not showing up on screen as much as I'd really hope it to I don't really know how to get around it I need to do a bit of googling to work out how I'm going to get this to look better on camera for you guys but I can assure you you've got a beautifully pink middle and it's a not really nice even 
um, look right the way out to both sides of that pink middle and that is what you get when you're doing this flipping technique if you don't do the flipping technique and you go for something like a, a reverse sear it tends to be a grayer color that you get all the way through but by doing the flipping it does remain um, your generic pink which is what everybody looks for in a steak so we've got it cut and it's time to give it a taste so i do love a nice thick juicy ribeye steak cooked like this just keep flipping it so i'm gonna have a piece at the rarer end so i'm hoping that that is going to pick up the color well i always find that the steak looks really nice off camera and i can't quite get the camera quality right to get the steak looking just perfect so i've got a little piece of fat in the middle but that don't bother me beautifully tender through the middle a nice crust on the outside that is what you want out of a steak if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life UK, then please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Cheers.